can access because everybody is on mute. Quick. Okay. All right. Thanks. There we go. Manish Yadav, unmute. I give you access to unmute, Manish. Unmute ho gaya. Can you talk, Manish? I'm not able to hear you. You're able to unmute, but I'm not able to hear you. Be loud. Yeah, yeah. No, I can't hear. Rishi, unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Be loud. Cannot. Yes, be loud. Better welcome everyone. Say good evening to Derek, sir. Quick. Good evening, sir. Uh, welcome to this meeting. And uh, I hope you share your knowledge with all of us. Hope okay, Rishi. A great week. Rishi, tell Derek, sir, what you're studying. Beta. What are you studying? Rishi, can you tell, sir, what you're studying? You can you can unmute. Yes. So I am pursuing BTEC Bachelor in Technology in Computer Science in the ATAP. That's my degree. And what course are you studying? Why is this topic for today? So this is the course provided by sir is uh, uh, Lean Startup Management. So as we know that startups, especially in India, are a booming, booming economy and a lot of opportunities for young graduates. So I thought, you know, learning how to manage and be part of a startup would be a great way to learn. So that's why I'm part of this course. One, thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, guys, I just want to tell you, uh, Derek is a very, very good known friend of mine for the last, I don't know, Derek, six, seven years almost. No, um, Not well, you came to 10 I years. First, I first, yeah, I first went to Chennai in 2016. And I think we were online before that. So probably since about 2014 or 2015. Yeah. And uh, Derek Sishayat is an author of a very famous textbook called Creativity and Innovation. Um, Derek Sir's textbook is used in business schools world over, especially in the UK. Sir sits in London. He's a consultant to many, many companies on creativity and innovation why innovation is needed, right? And we have used Sir's textbook and Sir came as a professor emeritus to us in VIT Chennai and taught a course, stayed in VIT Chennai, took a course for the business school and engineering students. So Derek, Sir, we invite you that could you please give you valuable time this semester or uh, some other semester, please come down to VIT AP and uh, we'll be grateful. So. Without any further ado, I would just like to quickly, quickly take you through uh, Sir's profile. Uh, I don't want to show directly to the profile. Let me tell you how to do it. Uh, quickly give me thumbs up, okay? Is Google there on the screen? Rishi, keep communicating to me. Unmute and talk, Rishi. Yes, sir. Google is there. You can see your what screen. What you can do is just go to Google and put D-E-R-E-C-K-C, -E -E -C, machine learning, it's already there. Just search Derek Sheshire, nothing, right? And there you go, the entire Google knows Derek Sheshire, the first website, that's DerekSheshire.com for you guys, okay? That's, uh, Rishi, is it there on the screen? Yes, sir, it is there. Yeah, so what I'll do is, um, you can unmute anytime you want. Okay, I gave you that. All right, so uh, you can see there, uh, I'll share the uh, entire link to you after the program so that you can keep in touch with Mr. Derek and uh, entire videos, podcasts uh, about speaking and innovation. Uh, everything, sir, kept it free, absolutely free. All right, he writes articles, he writes so many things. And in all his visits to India, he takes back entire entire thing of how innovation can be done all right so i don't want to take much time but everything is there in the website i'm scrolling it down for you and including search email and Derek, can i go and show your book is it on amazon or should i show from google Derek, it's up to um, you um if you if you look it, it is it is on amazon so um, shall i go in fact, in fact if i just turn around 
yeah you can show that yeah first let me put it here and yeah, then so it is it is on amazon yeah so i'll put um Let me search. Can I just share the link directly to them? Yeah, wh whatever. Okay. I'm just putting book by Derek Shisha. This one, right? There we go. Yeah. Uh, Rishi, unmute and tell me better. Yes, sir. We can see. All right. There we go. So that's the link there. I guess it's little. But is it there? So that's a yes, textbook. Yes, can see the image. Uh, what's the price? Rishi, what's the price? 1,430. Ah, costly here, bhai. Foreign. Okay. So anyway, so that's an amazing book. And creativity, innovation. Let me just stop sharing the screen. All right. So this is an amazing topic. Design thinking, first unit. Lean startup management, first unit. Entrepreneurship, first unit. Everywhere, this topic is there. Right. So, Derek, thank you so much for being an author, speaker, and my students from India at 7 p.m. They're there with you and you're giving your lunchtime um, over to you. And then we'll have quick Q&A session. So 35, 40 minutes over to you, Derek. Um, can I can I put you on spot spot so that could you show your book, please? All oh, right. Hey. It's on the shelf. It was on the shelf behind me, but. Uh... Ah, uh, they yeah, that's that that's mirrored, unfortunately. But yeah, your face, you get the idea. The, your face is hiding. So anyway, yeah. yeah. Right, Derek, that. you. Yeah, right, and right. the students are a combination of business school, commerce, business engineering. Yeah. Right. Okay. I shall just share my screen and. Right, turkey doggy, and I'll actually turn off that camera because there's a there's a camera, another camera pointing at me. So, right, so I haven't put innovation and creativity because creativity is part of innovation, and it would actually have used too much slide space. Um, this is this is a slide that Sam's seen before, and and it, and it highlights an issue. Where, where's the innovation here? We have a farmer in, in India creating a selfie stick um, by putting, putting his iPhone or his smartphone in between two of the prongs. We have someone else who's got something a bit more sophisticated where they can, uh, they can actually take photos, they can start and stop the video. So we'll come back to this and we'll answer the question later. But I'd just like to leave you with that question. Where do you think the innovation is? And it starts us thinking about what actually is innovation. So I had a look at Sam's poster, which I, 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 I unfortunately, I, I, I didn't see it till quite late. So what I'm not going to um, say, because it mentions what industry expects, of students. So what I'm not going to say is industry expects this, industry expects that. What I'm actually going to do is a, a very top level, I suppose, potted history of some of the bits of innovation. And all I'll say now is that if you are going out into industry after you've finished your course, or if you're doing some things whilst innovation wise, whilst you're still studying, then you will need to know all of these things, these are not things that you can just uh, copy and learn from a textbook. They're thing, it, it, it's the context to the things you do as well. So we, we, I, first of all, I'd like to answer the question, why do we even need this? People say, well, I know what innovation is. Yeah, you can, you can, you can give me an answer, but the question is, why do we actually need it? What's the point of it? If there's no point, 
then we're actually just playing or we've got an expensive hobby. Now, this is a thing I, I like to do in interactive workshops. We're not going to be um, doing interactive stuff with this today. But that number on the screen is the volume of the Indian Ocean in litres, 264 quintillion litres. That's a lot of water. So imagine from where you are now, you've gone to wherever's local to you, and you're on the beach. Um, you might be swimming, you might just be paddling in the beach, but you're enjoying the Indian Ocean. Further on the beach, maybe somewhere where you can't see them, is, is somebody who's not really very nice. And in their hand, they have a, a container, a litre container full of seawater. And in that container, uh, with the seawater, there's billions and billions of bacteria. And these bacteria, they have a very interesting property in that their waste product turns the water bright red. So given that the number of bacteria double every minute, just think for a minute, or not even a minute, just a few seconds, how long do you think it would take for the entire Indian Ocean to turn red so that you had to jump out and you couldn't paddle or swim in the sea anymore? So that's you, you've got 264 quintillion litres of seawater and one litre that contains billions of these bacteria that double in number every minute. So how long before everything turns bright red? So just, just th you don't need to do an in-depth calculation on your calculator, but is it seconds? Is it minutes, hours, days, months, years? How long? Well, the answer is just under 68 minutes. I, I do this with different seas and oceans around the world, but depending on where people are. If you do this with the Mediterranean, as an example, it's only about five minutes quicker. And it's simply because everything's exponential. So with the power of something being exponential is one of the major reasons why we need to adopt a new way of thinking, a new way of behaving. This is a made up example. But think about COVID. COVID was an exponential phenomenon. Depending on what the R number was, it just spread like wildfire. First of all, it was there, then it wasn't. I can remember when COVID first came to the UK saying to my wife, oh, it, you know, it, it'll sweep across the country and it'll be gone in six months. And three years later, it's still here. But there are other things that are exponential. Social change. If you start telling your friends about a new, a new app on, 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 on the phone or some new facility in TikTok or Instagram, that will spread exponentially as well. Some people who are in IT will have heard of a thing called Moore's Law, which was, it's not a real law, but it was, it was invented by Gordon Moore, one of the co-founders of Intel. And it basic, he basically said that if, well, not if, what would actually happen is the density of transistors on a chip would double every two years. Now, Moore's law doesn't quite hold these days um, simply because we can't get rid of uh, enough heat from the chips because they're so densely packed. But basically, with the advances in chip technology and cost savings, it roughly means that every 10 years for the same amount of purchasing power, you can get 100 times more computing power. Again, that's not necessarily a threat like COVID is, but it's something that maybe we could take advantage of. So there's lots of reasons why we need to be more flexible. We need to be faster. There are things maybe we haven't got solutions for that now we can because of different ways of thinking, new, way, new ways of doing things. 
So it allows us to solve all sorts of problems that we couldn't solve before. Another thing is life cycle length. This isn't just particular to Europe or the UK. This is worldwide. It's a survey that's done by a lady in the States every two years or so. And basically what it says is that every, uh, well, up, up until from the Industrial Revolution, in, well, which was 100 and so years ago in the UK, up until about the 1980s, the average life cycle of a company was of the order of 75 years. And that's from that, that, that's that, that's from sort of formation to death, if you like. Everybody's seen a, a, a Gaussian distribution, that sort of bell curve shape. Um, and if you imagine that that's the life cycle of a company, from one side to the other was 75 years. But the interesting point is the midpoint, the peak. And that is about 35 years or so. Go to the 1990s, and that 75 years has shrunk to 15. Fast forward to 2020, and that has shrunk to six. So that half-life, if you like, is three, maybe four years, if you're lucky. So you've got three or four years to reinvent your product or your company. So we've got to do something differently. Just out of interest, when you slide down the other side of that curve, when your company, your business or your product goes into decline, there's only a 10% chance that you can make it back to the high point. Or to put it another way, there's a 90% chance that you're actually going to fail. It's quite a sobering thought. So what, what does this innovation stuff actually consist of? What does it cover? And also, going back to the pitchfork and the, and the selfie stick, what actually is innovation? This is another interesting um, graph. It comes, again, from the lady who did the life cycle survey. And basically, it helps us divide um, areas of potential innovation up. Because people talk about incremental in innovation, disruption, radical innovation. In a way, it, the word innovation is, is, is somewhat misleading because what actually happens is people then try and define innovation. Um, and you can't really, you just know what it is when you're doing it. But she had this little matrix and the percentages are the percentages of companies that responded to the survey about where they actually are. Now in the bottom left-hand corner, we, we would have incremental innovation. And in the top right-hand corner, you would get the radical and, and really disruptive innovation. And the way she categorizes these things is simply by what she calls intensity, which is, it's not how hard you work, it's really down to how, how much you have in terms of resources, how many staff, how much money, how much time, what can you actually throw at this problem in order to solve it? And along the bottom, she defines the scope. So subsystem is a small component of something. So if you're a motor manufacturer, a subsystem could be the engine management system or the dashboard. The system could be something a bit bigger. If you're a car manufacturer, it, you could actually be redesigning a car model. And the ecosystem would be, well, we're ditching petrol, we're going electric, but we're also def uh, defining a whole load of stuff around it. So charging systems, charging stations, and other equipment that would go with the car. It's a much bigger scale thing. And what you can do depends on, on, the, on these things, where, where you're going to target it, the resources you've got. So if you, only can if you can only target technology, for instance, so you adopt the, the Moore's Law approach, of, should we call it that? then what will actually happen is that you will go along one of the axes. You will, you will, you will tend to, to create technological innovation. 
if you focus on what the market wants, you will get a market niche go along the other axis. Uh, otherwise, you can be somewhere in the middle. But there is no, this is disruptive, this is incremental. There's a continuum. It depends where you want to be, where you need to be, and where you can actually afford to be. Most people have, have seen this, but uh, the innovation adoption curve. I, 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 well, I don't know. I just love it because I, I always explain this in terms of iPhones. The innovators, they're, they're the people that are waiting for the iPhone 42 or something. It's not even been invented yet, but they've already got their names down for it. They want one. They have to have one. The early adopters, well, they're not quite that greedy. They, 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 they've just heard about the latest iPhone and they're queuing at the Apple shop. They want one as soon as it's there. The early majority, well, they're not that keen. They will buy one on eBay or Amazon um, once the reviews are out and the, uh, and, and the software upgrades have happened. They're a bit more cautious. Well, the late majority, well, they're way, they're way behind, and the laggards are still using a Nokia 3310. Nothing wrong with that, but that's where they are. So the point, the point is, this works for people adopting um, new products, but there's a, there's a very, very similar curve if you want people to change. If you're in, if you're in, a, in an organization and you need to change, because you are innovating, you're changing the services you, you offer, you're changing the products you create, you might just simply want to create new business processes. You need people to go with you. And these people will be, they won't quite be innovators, but they will be, some will be at the forefront, some will be at, at the end. Now, there's almost an 80-20 rule. It's not quite but this place where we draw the chasm, that almost defines exactly where you want to, who you want to work on. The early adopters and the innovators, those people will be with you no matter what. The early majority, they will follow you once they realize that it's an okay thing to do, an okay place to be. The late majority, well, they may come as well. The laggards, well, you don't care. Really, if they if they don't like what you're doing, they will go elsewhere and they can be replaced by other people. So in a way, this is all about where you actually put your effort. So you put your effort into the 14 percent or so of people who are going to be advocates for what you're doing. So this could be engineers. This could be this could be the marketplace. It could be anything. You do not need to put effort into everything or, uh, or or focus on that whole spectrum so again if it's things that you need to be able able to do um as when when, when you leave uh, university then then managing change is um very important thing to do because you will come across it at some point and at some point somebody will be trying to manage you as well so beware of these things there's plenty of material available those doing business courses will undoubtedly come across ways of dealing with this but how do we manage all this that's one of the things that ceos or people at the top of companies say well i'd love to do it it's but i don't really understand it how can we get a handle on this how will we create a return on investment well, before I describe some tools, one of which is that is actually mine, there's um everybody will undoubtedly have heard of Pfizer. Now, Pfizer have created what they call an innovation gym. And it's it's used within the company to basically solve problems. And it it's a dedicated workspace. It's managed professionally by people whose job it is to manage it. There's food and drink. There's there's um, facilitation materials, um, things that you can um, create prototypes and mock-ups with. And basically, departments or teams say, "I, I would like to go there," and, and they they go there for three months or six months, 
and they solve the particular problem that they needed to solve. Now, this facility costs $6 million a year to run. But they, cal they calculate their return on investment to be over 3,000%. And the way they do that is simply go to these departments and say, look, oh, you've taken three months to do this. How long would it have taken you if you hadn't have come here? And it's done purely on time saved. So the return on that investment is 3,000%. Now, that's just one of the ways you can actually calculate a return on investment, an opportunity cost. What would it have cost you to do it? Or rather, if you hadn't have done it. So we've got to think differently about these things, just simple KPIs um, and looking at a spreadsheet for, for sales and profit and loss is not really going to help us with our um, work it, working out how much of an advantage we've had. So how might we manage this? Well, I know, I know Sam's seen this before, but this was created by myself many years ago now. And it basically says that innovation on the left-hand side, however you want to define your innovation output, is, and all that stuff on the right side, that constant A is, it's a multiplier. It's a mixture of need and desire and resistance. So obviously you can imagine if resistance is too, too great, then your, your innovation efforts will go downhill until you turn something around. But that function is an interesting one. The um, C is creativity. So that's how we come up with ideas. So that's everything from your, oh, I hate to say this, brainstorming sessions. Um, forgive me, I, I hate brainstorming. But all, all the ways you come up with ideas, how you store ideas, how you combine ideas if you're working in a team with people. So it's it's just what you expect from creativity. The K, I, I use the term know-how rather than knowledge because a lot of the IT people, they start thinking about um, expensive knowledge management systems. So know-how is the stuff you already know. You don't need to discover it. It might be in your head. It might be in a book. It might be on a computer disk. It could be hieroglyphics on a pyramid in Egypt. It doesn't matter. It's stuff that you already know. And you can imagine that if you, depending on how you balance those two, you also get um, either radical sort of innovation with lots of creativity, or if you have very little creativity and lots of know-how, you get something that's very, very incremental, sort of crawls along at a snail's pace. But the important thing, because we were talking about powers earlier, is that constant N, and that's really at the hub of innovation. So what you do might create shiny new gadgets. It might create products and services that are way beyond what everyone else has done. But the nub of that is really people. And then effectively represents organizational culture. It's not the stuff that the bosses can tell you about. It's the stuff that grows. And the more it grows, the better it gets, the more practice you have, the more your innovation efforts will take off. So what does that what does that end consist of? This is a this is a plot of N for a company. And the, the, the components of that are things like teamwork. You cannot innovate successfully without working as a team. Management. How well. Maybe I ought to update this now, but it's 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 really uh, leadership because management. We're not we're not managing paper clips. We're not managing managing the stationery cupboard. We're managing people. So how how risk averse are people? Their leadership qualities. How how good are they at actually doing that? Is there a desire to win? Do people actually want to win, or are they just turning the handle? I mean, I'm sure you can think of um, many. Many uh, um, Indian organizations 
um, perhaps like um, the, the Indian civil service, where people will be quite happy to go to work and turn the handle. So the desire to win may not be quite so, I'm not saying it's not there, but it won't be quite so high. But even if there is a desire to win, do people actually know how to do it? What, do, what does winning look like? What does the pathway look like? And the environment, I don't mean the environment as in being green or recycling. I mean the external environment. In some cases, the internal environment too. What does it look like? This is where the this is where your competitors are. This is your industrial landscape that you're actually working in. In fact, the students, this is also your academic landscape because I hate to say it when you when you leave university, you will be competing with other people for some of these jobs. So what does the environment look like? And what, what can you what can you do to make yourself a big player in, in the environment? How clever can you be? Again, relationships. If if we're talking about companies, it's advantageous to have relationships at different levels, not just the board level, not just the sales level, if you're selling B2B, and not just at the manufacturing worker level, at all levels. This helps with the flow of knowledge. Culture, we've met, I've mentioned that before, but there's two types of culture. There's organizational culture, which is the type that develops over time and corporate culture which is the type the bosses tell us about you know you are great you will work hard we are the best in the world they can they can tell us but we don't necessarily believe it so there are two types of culture and the last two is is what does a company do to stretch people does it give them interesting or challenging tasks or does it as i said before do they just simply turn the handle and allied with that is apart from what you do to stretch people how do you actually get the best from people do you just beat them with a stick dangle a carrot what is it you actually do and all of these things together will help you with that with that magical number n the better you get at these things the better you get at managing your creativity and know-how the better you are going to be able to innovate so there's a lot there's a lot there so if, if you want if you want to be if you were doing your if you're doing any of your if you're doing an mba you're doing your bba you're doing whatever it happens to be there's stuff there if you're into technology there's stuff there no matter what you do there's stuff there and it affects every part of the company that's why innovation is actually a strategy. It's not a tool. It's not, um, it's not a policy. It's a strategy because it affects the whole of a company. So who has been innovating? It's, it's difficult to pick because the, these days you'd have just picked Google or whatever. And but here's a, here's a bit of a, a mishmash. This was a company that I first came across many years ago, a company called uh, Selfer Manufacturing. And what they did made was those things on the left-hand side. They made mattresses. And the thing you have to understand about a mattress in um, Central or South America is that it's not just a cheap thing that you lie on. It's a luxury item. It's not low down on the floor. The bed base is high. You almost have to climb into it. It's luxurious and soft. It's and it's a very expensive item. So Selfa made, well, they 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 made about two thousand a day of these. They they, they were the biggest manufacturer, um, or rather, should we say, the biggest seller of the of mattresses in Central and South America, and the second biggest in the Southern U United States the turnover of over a hundred million dollars and that's an awful lot of mattresses and they did it they did it the hard way everybody's seen pocket springs for mattresses they took in wire they took in fabric rolls of foam rolls of material and they made these things from scratch two thousand a day roughly one every 23 minutes from one of them the machines that um, made them 
But what on earth do you do when recession's coming? And this was their problem. Recession was coming. They didn't really know what to do. They just said, help, we need to innovate, which was, which was quite nice, really. But the consequences of not doing anything were dire. They had three factories, Mexico City, Monterey, and Guadalajara, 800 employees. And they were looking at closing a factory. And I don't know how many employees they were going to get rid of. So we, we, applied, we applied the innovation equation and created a report which told them they didn't have to turn their company upside down, but they needed just to work on certain areas. That was great. They, need, they needed to change the way some of their management. They needed to change the way they thought about things. And they needed some new products pretty quickly. So we created um, what we called the House of Ideas, which was two houses together on the outskirts of Mexico City. Um, the, the, we took people from all over the company, so operations, marketing, finance, sales, every, literally everywhere. And they stayed in one of those houses for six months. They lived in one, they worked in the other. And we simply said to them, we need uh, two new products in six months. That's what we want from you. What you can, you can do anything you like. You can talk to whoever you like. We have prototyping facilities. Go do it. And at the end of six months, they had a big party um, with the Cirque du Soleil because they'd done it. They actually had five products. Um, one, of, one of them that's not that remarkable is behind this chap in the suit. And if you've go, gone to a bed store, you'll see um, beds and mattresses, acres and acres of them. The store owners don't like it because it uses up a lot of their floor space. And the manufacturers don't like it because it doesn't actually show off their products very well. So one of their simple things was this clear plastic perspex, um, almost, almost like a toast rack, putting mattresses in. I don't know why anybody hadn't thought of that before, but they hadn't. So they spoke to 3M and DuPont about plastic springs rather than the wire springs that they had, which meant they could go into hospitality. They could go into healthcare. You could actually um, adjust the top sheet of the mattress. You could actually change the comfort of the mattress without having to buy a new one. There was a whole load more things that they came up with. And this was just the, re the result of that six months. Fast forward a few months, and we come to the two interesting things on the right. They realized they had to do something else. Now, their, their skills were in manufacturing and also ergonomics. They knew about people's backsides and things. They, they, they knew about bodies. They found two Swedish designers. Um, from um, They founded a company called Vuge. Now, Vuge created these things which were effectively chairs well well they are chairs but they were a cross between um ikea and oh mary quant if you like two years after they created this they had two new factories and 1200 employees the company had actually escaped recession just by starting off with some sensible objectives and then making use of the the talent the skills that they already had and acquiring some of the other skills that they didn't have this is an, another example of 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 the way you can innovate and the giveaway is the train on the bottom of the bottle when Jap japan railways were digging the tunnels for their um their bullet trains, they go, they go underneath a lot of mountains. And the mountains in Japan are, tend to be made of granite. And they have snow on the top. And you can imagine what happens is the water flows down through the granite and into any tunnel that you happen to bore. And that's what was happening. They were getting fed up with the water in the tunnels. And one day, a guy, I don't, again, I don't know why he did it, he tasted the water. And thought, by golly, this tastes really good. 
So he went to his bosses and said, I think we should we should do something about this. We should, you know, can, can we bottle it or whatever? And they did. So instead of pumping it away, throwing it into the nearest river or the sea or whatever, they bottled it and they put vending machines on every station platform. And five years on from that, they were selling $45 million worth of bottled water. So sometimes it's not about something new. It's about ser what we call serendipity. It's a bit of luck and then knowing what to do. So you could you could walk walk out of walk out of college, trip over a paving stone, and be attracted by something. And if you knew what to do, that would be great. If you didn't, you'd have just tripped over and it would be an accident. So serendipity is one of the one of the key things. It is not just good luck. Everybody can have good luck. But what happens when you do something about it, when you have some intention to do something about it? This is the interesting one. Um, we'll go back to Moore's law in a minute. But if you're, no matter what you're doing, if you're spending money and say you spend an extra $1 million per year on your research and development or innovation or whatever, you will go up that line. It's it, you, you are going to have an incremental change in what you can actually do. Now, if you can actually increase that, not just sort of go up by by a, a million dollars a year or whatever. If you said, "Well, I'll increase that by ten percent a year, every year, forever," then that would happen. Your change will be exponential, and after a given period of time, you'd have a gap between those companies who changed incrementally or those that had chosen to change exponentially. Now, there is a company, and you can be thinking of it all whilst I tell you the rest and see if you can guess who it is. But there's a company who did this. And the reason I mentioned Moore's Law early on is because they took advantage of that. Not, not only did they get more for their money but they also spent much more and in 2020 their r d budget was just under 43 billion dollars in 2021 it was just north of 56 billion dollars and at this point i hope to say that the entire research budget for the country of italy was only 35 billion so they were spending more money than the whole of the country of Italy on research. And in 2022, that number was 73, over 73 billion. So well done if you've guessed that it was Amazon. Whether you like Amazon or not, they are very, very, very good at innovating. Yes, they have trashed a lot of our small businesses. They've done a lot of damage, but they're a very clever company. Now, this is the interesting thing. I, I can see, I can imagine some people sitting there going, but what about all the clever things we, we've done in India? In fact, there's too many clever things to actually put on a slide. But uh, AUS is one of the biggest drone um, companies in India. That's an AUS drone there. And staggeringly, I can believe this. There are between one and 200 drone startups per year. Now, and these started several years ago. So goodness knows how many companies go by the wayside, how many start up. But that's an awful lot of drone startups. The drone market was, in 2020, was not that big. But it's growing exponentially. And it's forecast to be just under $5 billion by 2030. So let's go and make drones, you say. Well, actually, the biggest drone manufacturers in the world are, are Chinese. And unfortunately, they're very, very good at it. And I very much doubt whether many Indian companies would, would get close to them, particularly in terms of cost. 
but that's not where the money lies. A drone is just a concept. It's, it's like a car. What can you do with it? Now, many of the companies in India, and I'm sure you'll, you'll know, know them better than I do, they have what they call stacks of services, the drones at the bottom. So what can the drone do? It can carry payloads. It can carry a camera. It can, it can do identification. It can do surveys. There's a whole load of things that a drone can do. The bigger ones can carry heavy objects and people. Um, you can use them for entertainment in the, in the sky. There's a whole load of things you can do, and it's the added value that's the clever stuff. So I would urge you, if you're thinking of playing around with drones, yes, by all means, play with them, but you're probably never going to create um, one to match the Chinese. But there's all sorts of things that go with it. How do you teach people to fly these things um, competently? What else could they be used for? We're already using them for parcels. We're using them for pres prescription drugs, delivering them to people's houses. What else can we do and use them for? So I, I, I didn't miss out India. I, there are so many com companies, as, uh, as it was said at the beginning, so many people creating interesting things that it would be impossible to cover them all. And the potential, um, but uh, not budgets, the potential pro profits are huge. But the one thing I would would I, I hope hope there aren't too many too many lecturers listening. But one of the things that does need innovating is is the education system. So I've, I've spoken to a few people in India about this, and they, they they tend to agree. But I'm not sure that they can they they can help do anything about it for the time being. But the crux of the matter is, in order to innovate, you have to have a problem. If you don't have a problem, i.e., we haven't got enough, we haven't got enough drinking water, we don't have enough telecoms coverage, we don't have enough food, whatever it happens to be, unless you've got a problem, there is no point innovating. Otherwise, you've just got a hobby or 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 a, or a loss lead, loss leading business. So there has to be a problem. Problem problems are what attract people. It attracts money. It and if you can match them to customers' problems, you've got a great money making idea. So you need a problem. And finally, back to one of my favourite quotes from Coco Chanel, the designer: "Don't spend time beating on a wall, hoping that it's going to transform into a door." Part of Part of that C in the innovation equation is creativity. There are ways of coming up with ideas. There's ways we can, I wouldn't say trick, but we can make help people uh, create ideas, come up with ideas. There's creative techniques, facilitation techniques. There's, there's all sorts of things out there we can do. We can use reframing to look at, look at problems from, from a different perspective. There's a lot out there. So this is not this is not a an in-depth um, lecture about creativity and innovation. I've skimmed over many, many, many parts, but all of these things you will need to be aware of. And these are not things you can just read out of a textbook. You have to sort of in a way experience them or find some way of understanding them. Because if you copy things, as we know some people like to do, without the context they used in, they can be they can be useless or sometimes dangerous. So there we go. That's my that's my potted history of um, of creativity. So. Um, Back, back, back to Sam, I think. All right. So I better stop I, sharing. There we go. Yeah. So Derek, I've shared, I've shared your email. Maybe I'll, I'll put your email to them, but I've given your, your website. I've given your book and um, maybe students can 
even um, get on with uh, Derek. Um, but now it's up to the students. Uh, I have opened it up. You know, anybody can unmute. It's a time for Q and A. Uh, exactly, it was seven to eight, and it's almost two thirty p.m. Derek's lunch time and post lunch. Quickly, guys, uh, put on your. Yeah, ask, ask, ask me lots of awkward questions. They're, they're right. too shy, Sam. They're too, they're too polite. Okay, anyone? You can quickly, quickly, quickly unmute yourself, ask your questions. Most welcome. One day I shall come to VITAP and those people on the screen, they won't be able to hide. They'll. <laughs> It'll be there, yeah. Okay, somebody's raising. Ah. Let me, just give me a sec. Huh? Okay, first of all, are you able to, are you able to unmute? Amendra, Akshaya, are you able to unmute? Yes. Okay. Leela Priya, you can unmute and ask your question, please. Yes, sir. Hi, sir. I am Leela Priya, currently pursuing second year computer science engineering in VIT. Mm -hmm. Firstly, thank you for the amazing informative session, sir. And my question is that on which things should a student or a person should be more concerned to be more creative and innovative? Mm. Well, you said you said creative and innovative now, which are, which are two slightly different things. Um, there, there are one one of the things that you can do quite easily is um, you can either search online or, in fact, uh, Derek, could you please unmute yourself a minute? I've given access to all. Anybody can unmute. Oh, oh but you muted yeah. me. I was unmuted. Ha! Huh. Yeah. Um, there's lots of things you can do. Um, I would look at some of the creative techniques that that, that are that are available. Um, there's there's stuff on the internet. There's it it is everywhere. Um, it depends what you want to do. Um, but if you're looking at um. I, I suspect what you might want to do as students, and also particularly if you've got um, projects and things to do, you want you want to be able to get create ideas. Somebody might set you up some sort of problem, and it's difficult to difficult to work on. So you want to reframe it. Um, re, um, reframing it just just means looking at it from a, from a different angle. So um, it's it's um, as I said. So, Search for these things online. The only thing I would say is uh, is be careful. Um, I did say that I hated brainstorming. And the reason I hate brainstorming is because it's not used in the right way. But all creative techniques that you will see are basically one of two types. They're um, divergent or convergent. Now, a convergent technique would be where you're, you're actually looking at finding what the problem is. A divergent technique would be we know what problem what the problem is we need some ideas to fix it so one creates lots of things one focuses on another thing so there are techniques that work in both in two ways use the wrong type and you'll be wasting your time you will you, you well you won't be entirely wasting your time but you'll take a lot longer to get to where you want to go so i would look at look at creative techniques I would look at possibly things around change because you're going to want to change things and you're probably going to want to motivate people. You want to motivate people to come with you. You've got a great idea. You, you want to motivate them. So I would say those are three things to, to, to look at. Creative techniques for working with ideas and people and reframing problems and then how to, how to work with people, how to, change and, and motivation as i said before there's a lot there's a lot of this stuff um but i think that would that would do to start off with okay sir thank you sir
Okay. Others quickly, one or two. Ashwant, you guys did a lot of job, Mega Sham. Your product was amazing yesterday, a lot of creative work. Can you, can you tell us, sir, what do you do? Mega Sham is an amazing designer, along with Ashwan, the team. They design a lot of products. Mega Sham, over to you. Quickly tell us, sir, what do you do? Good evening, sir. I'm Mega Sham, like pursuing undergraduate in VITAP University and pursuing course of design thinking. Like, we have designed a product. This is normal water bottle. Like, we use drink and, like, they again refill the water and everything. Like, it costed us 20 rupees for us. Then it's what used, do we have done? It's a used bottle. Tell that. Yeah. It's, it's a used bottle. Like mm -hmm. it's a water bottle, normal water drinking bottle. So like what we have done, we have taken all this and we have filled some water bubbles. Like these are water bubbles. If you mm -hmm. put it on water, then they automatically bulge and get some shiny texture. And we have taken a small like LED strip, this one with cork, which costed mm -hmm. around 20 rupees. And we have uh, matched everything and made a beautiful like mm -hmm. like it can be placed on your cupboard and it can be like a night lamp when everything is set like and if it is dark it can make a beautiful pictures to capture and we have yeah, designed so a button on the butt on the top mega sham you have so, electric button on the top of the bottle this bottle neck it's a normal I electric cork Mm -hmm. It's a normal electric cork, which we can uh, like use cells. And we are planning to make it as USB type and use it for our power banks or charger thing. Mm -hmm. In next prototype, like yesterday we had a prototype section in our college. So we got some feedbacks, like change it to like USB and make it. Look. So in the process of empath, like every day I pay 10, empathize prototype testing. Like we have done our prototype testing. We got some feedback so that we'll make better and we'll make a final product and make it used for marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, Mega Sham, can you switch off the light and show your actual product in demo? Nay, no, your room light. Yes. Okay, how does it look now? Oh, wow. Nice, man. So, Derek, these are the students mm -hmm. studying and doing these products through my course. Amazing talent, um, BBAs, BCOMs, and BTECs. And uh, they'll be doing a sale of this next month in the expo and mm -hmm. finding a go to market. They do a lot of things, a lot of things. So, Megasham, any quick question to Sir so that we can quickly wind up? Uh, and, sir, yeah. like, innovation is a great idea, but some traditional things we need to change it, or like, like in India, we follow some traditional techniques to uh, get uh, like milk and everything if you change it like it may like it may change quality of products right like mm -hmm. traditional oh, way oh. they take oil from coconuts and traditional way they make some like recipes like we used to call in my grandmother's home like traditional way they in rock they will grind everything so it feels more taste than making in like mixers and everything yeah, I mean, to be to be on to be honest, uh, as I, as I as as I did as I said, in a way, before you start innovating, you need a problem, and if you ha if you haven't got a problem because what you're doing, cre you know, creating creating food or whatever, partic particularly in India, because I know Indians love love food. Why why would you want to bother with that unless, of course, you could produce it fa much faster or much cheaper? Why would you bother? Um, I mean, I know, I know, I know, I know Sam's seen some of these, but the, the there, there is a wonderful, I'd love to get hold of it again, but there's a video of a guy making um, dosa with a, a machine, which is based on a bicycle. Now that means he's, he's not, he's still making the same dosa, but they, he's just making them a bit faster. There are plenty of guys creating chai by the side of the road, not quite the same as their fathers or grandfathers might've made it. But very, very similar. So why, why bother? And, and, and you're right. You don't, you don't change everything for the sake of it because you probably won't get your money back. But also, um, I mean, there's, I mean, particularly in the UK, there's been a re resurgence in organic food. People are going back to the old ways of baking bread, creating flour, 
simply because it's better. Some cases it's healthier. So yes, the pro the products we do need are, you know, much more fundamental than that. Like you know, uh, uh, plentiful clean water. Um, in some cases, power because a lot of people still don't have power. So all of those are, 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 are um, stuff to do with pollution. All of those are problems that we have, and plenty plenty of other ones. But you're right. Yeah, why would you, why would you change something that works brilliantly? Um, I mean, if it's all clinical and it comes out of a vending machine, you're not going to have any any pleasure with your you know, drinking your milk or whatever at all, are you? So, so yeah, you're exactly right. And one more thing, like, like like following the path of other, like in mobile IT industry, we can see like every other branch. Nokia was leading a couple, like, couple of years back. Mm -hmm. Nokia has changed. It means when they smartphone mo touch mobiles enter the market everyone followed android and innovatively nokia has not followed android os and has taken some windows but that same innovation made them bottom to the market mm. like is it good to create a new one or follow the best one which is in the market it 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 it, it, it do, does actually depend on, on i mean the if expose one of the interesting questions there which is about which is about the um the base pro the base product if you like and and that is quite interesting do you follow the trend and just create um an android product or do you say oh i've got some code i'll write a new operating system for a phone and create a new phone um do, do you do that <sighs> Yeah, I mean, Nokia had a problem. Kodak had a problem by not following digital cameras a, a long, a long, long time ago. Uh, many other people have had that problem. What do they follow the technology? And even even if you created a new Android phone, because Android is, well, I would, say, I don't know what the relative um, numbers of of iOS and Android are. Or do you focus on? the features of the phone it's still based on android but it's got extra features and, and that that that's that's a call to make um i honestly honestly i honestly don't know where that's going now but um i mean where could you take a smartphone is it even worth entering the marketplace who knows but years ago that that would have been a very interesting question should we shouldn't we Nokia went in and I mean made made a made a poor call. So yes, sir, thank you. But the session was more interesting and we got some knowledge. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean these these are the things we well, I don't know what you call them in India, but uh, we have the, what we call them in the UK, we have pub conversations. People go, they have a drink and they talk for hours. Sometimes they get very animated and irate and angry with each other but we call them pub conversations because they happen in pubs and people tend to talk the truth to each other so i don't know if you you have these conversations in cafes or whatever but uh yeah they will that's the other thing sharing as they say knowledge is the only thing you can when you share and the value doesn't decrease actually i have seen your twitter tweet sir three hours back like a Christmas gift 2020 that was more interesting like you have shared knowledge about your experience so thank you all right so let's wind up what uh, Derek was saying is see for example Maggie Sham you brought a bottle you put a light and you said sir it looks very good in the night very good it looks yeah Yes, sir. Okay. What sir is saying and experts are saying is until you do not see a problem, there has to be a problem to solve and then comes creativity innovation. For example, did anybody give you a problem telling that I want this bulb, I want this light. In India, we're not getting this. So what you did is it's your passion. In India, what happens most is in our country, we tell idea that I have an idea, I have an idea, I have an idea. 
अरे बॉस हो टोल दिस आइडिया वाई आर यू डूइंग दिस आइडिया किसको चाहिए एवरक कावाल ऐडिया एवरकना कावला एवरकना यूज हो You understand my blunt question? Yes. What I'm asking? For example, yes. right? There are three friends. They were going in a car. They met with an accident. Below the hip, they paralyzed. So now they're living good, but on wheelchair. Are you okay? Is my question correct? Is there a problem for them in their life? Yes or no? Quick, yes. give me thumbs up. Yes, sir. Yes. You can talk. Everybody yes. can talk. Yes or no? Quick, quick. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Working. Yes, sir. Paralyzed. Now there's a problem. Okay, they got graduation with you. Everything is there. But the problem is they cannot go to the job. Like how you'll go to the job. Now, when there is a problem, can we think of innovation? I know people in India who are physically challenged, below the hip, on the wheelchair, doing honeybee business, earning lakhs per month, more than a professional engineer or a businessman. You understand? But. somebody thought of the business somebody thought of the process somebody thought of the chair i i hope you understand what i'm talking about yes, there sir. has to be a problem that we have to solve actually right. our product also same sir like in our hostel we get light at the top this is only source for light that's that's so, that's, so when you write a proposal you should write there is a problem our room size is this our bed size is this everything is there below the table the light straight away comes on the i and then you have to bring some you know biological effects on the eye you understand what i'm saying so if this is there for the night we can save this much of electricity this much of watts this much of power and the, you understand what i'm talking about yes sir like only so it was so Solve the only the, half, half of the face will get brightness sir. so if you use product remaining sort of, so you can like uh, talking video calls or meeting this product would be helpful okay then you should do a comparison the price of that product which is already on your left and the price which is on the right yes sir getting the point yes sir right because yes, sir. money makes many things yes sir yeah all right so guys thank you so much it was wonderful i hope uh, derek thank you for coming all the way from london in uk and i'm sure the time it was a clear. long it was a long flight oh yeah long long flight You should be now. I don't know what's the time. Two forty p.m. for you. Yeah, twenty to three. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we would love and wish that you come here back to India. I just want to show before we close. Um, I guess it's here. I guess it's here. yeah. Okay. Is is my screen shared on the on the screen? No. Yes. No. Somebody quick. No sir. no sir no sir give me a second please okay now is there anything on the screen please yes sir what's there on the screen what's there on the screen? yes sir shek mehnaz kya hai screen mein what is there the poster sir in, in... the poster okay now what is there on the screen now what picture microsoft Can you identify two people in this picture who are there in this meeting? Hmm. I wonder who they were. Anyone? Quickly. Out of four, there are two people whom you know now. So you and Derek, sir. Derek. Am I there? Derek, sir. Okay, yes, sir. that's good. Uh, me with Derek. This was the Microsoft head office in India, and uh, we used to do programs and train. Um, Manager, senior managers of Microsoft. It was a wonderful opportunity we got, and uh, the book, what you see in the head um, of Microsoft there, on the right hand is a book. I guess I need to annotate, and it's here. Do you think that's your book? Okay. I believe so. Yes. All right, and the picture what you see here now. This is where. Um, that's vid chennai campus for you and when derek came as a professor emeritus that was during the own time uh, came down and took a full course for creativity innovation for our mba students then in vid chennai so um, that's it i just thought i'll 
And anyway, website I'm giving you, and this is the Amazon link of Sir's book. Um, so, sir, we request you when you come next time, uh, please get your books and uh, maybe the best participants, you can give it with your own signature, all right? And I wish all the students that you also have to become authors and speakers and solve problems. Thank you, Derek, for giving the formula. Thank you for giving examples. I know you took your busy schedule all the way from UK to us. And uh, thank you so much, um, students and kids in China. And this is your dinner time in India and lunch time, I'm sure post lunch for Derek. Yeah. So, uh, Sheikh Manas, could you please give a um, word of thanks, please? Unmute Karo and give a word of thanks. Uh, thank introduce you. yourself, what you're studying, what program? Uh, yes, sir. Well, I'm Sheikh Mehanas Tabasum. Uh, I'm louder, a little louder, please. Oh, wait. I'm, yeah, I'm Mehanas Tabasum. Uh, I'm studying fourth year from Integrated MTech Department, Computer Science. And uh, I'm taking your course, Lean Startup Management. Which slot? Uh, D1 slot, sir. Mm. D1. Yeah. For so Delhi. I, yes, sir. Yeah. Like, I have seen the invitation that uh, you have posted in the group. That's why I have joined this uh, international speaker series. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for giving this opportunity to know some of the innovation and creative ideas. And uh, uh, it is a quite wonderful experience we had with the speaker. And uh, he told about... Uh, how can we give our idea and all? And it was a really very uh, helpful, sir. And uh, thank you so much, everyone who have participated. And thank you, sir, for conducting a wonderful event with us. And thank you, Derek, thank you. for participating with the ITAP. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Manas. Okay. Everyone who wants a selfie on your camera, do cheers. And we'll take a picture with Derek and put it to his... Um, Insta, Facebook, whatever. Okay, quick, 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 put on your cam for a few seconds for the picture, picture, picture. All right, and people who come here, you get your grades. You understand what I'm saying? Arshwadan, how are you? Mm. Jaldi, jaldi, quick, 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 come on. All right. Arshwadan, are you okay? I'm good, what? sir. Good evening, sir. Hi. Cheers. Okay. Megarjun, your friends are putting another hands. So you get minus. Sorry, sir. They're disturbing, sir. Yeah, very good friends. Keep it up. Okay. Quick, quick, quick. Be ready, everybody. One, two, three with Derek. Okay. Can you give thumbs up? There's a virtual thumbs up. Quick, quick, quick. There's a virtual thumbs up. Is it there? Virtual thumbs up. Yeah, there we go. Derek, see, everyone is giving you thumbs up. Okay, there's a smiley there. If you're if you're happy, give smiley. If you're not happy, put that wah like that. You understand what I'm saying? Santo Sumata Chupi. Amohi Dir Satanat. Dev. Okay. Emoji, emoji, very important. Okay. All right. Okay, guys, thank you so much. I hope it was useful. Every month, we'll have a series of international speakers. We wish you also that you should be a speaker in some country somewhere in the future. Can we do that? Your innovation should speak. Your creativity should speak. Yes or no? Arshwadan Veppa. Yes or no? Tell me. Yes, sir. Loudly. Yes, sir. Very good. Okay. Namaste. Wanakam. Derek, thank you so much. Uh, can I stop the live? Yes, I can. Anyway, this is all there on YouTube. Share it with your friends. Let them also get to know. Is it okay? Okay. Everyone say thanks to Derek, sir. Quick, quick, quick. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Derek, have you heard that? I did indeed. Okay. All right, guys.